Right. So I want to welcome you today. We want to look at four, four, five basic things: equations, simultaneous equations, change of subject, vectors, and matrices. That's it. Two questions coming from this. It's as simple as that. So let's start with this. Once you are able to get the answer to this question, raise your hand. You tell me. Make x the subject of this equation on your screen. Once you are able to get the answer, raise your hand for me. And then let's begin. I hope you guys can hear me. Yes, dog, we can hear you. When you are done, that's your hand. Now you can tell it. So we have someone. Someone, could you tell me your result? Hello, Prof. Um, Doc, so the answer is um, um, x is equal to 3y plus 9a all into bracket um, raised to the power half all over 5. Great. That's it. Now, what's the first thing to do, ladies and gentlemen? The first thing to do is to move everything away by taking the minus 9a to the left-hand side, leaving the square root of 5x. When that is done, the next thing you want to do, and this is it, the next thing you want to do is to divide, square both. Because the, the x is in the square root, you got to take the square. Opposite of square root is square. So once you take the square of everything, on the right and everything on the left, you now have the square on the right canceling the square root on the right. So you will have something like this one here squared, and then this one here squared, and then this square will cancel the square root. So that's how come you are left with a 5x on the right hand side. And then everything on the left-hand side is squares. At this stage, you divide both sides by five, you divide both sides by five, x is equal to what you have in this situation. This is fairly simple. Next one. So this is your result at this stage. Let's take another one. I want you to make D the subject of this equation. Make D the subject of the equation. There are two ways of going around it, but one, one of the ways is I can take the LCM of this. Take the LCM of BD. And that is that. You get your BD. B goes into BD is D. D times A is AD. Okay, then plus D goes into BD is B. B times C is BC. Now this is equal to E. You can now cross multiply. So you have AD. plus BC equal to E plus BD. And you're looking for D. And D is on both sides, so you group like terms. So you move this one to this side. That leaves you with AD minus BD equal to E minus BC. And now you can take D out. Is that it? All right, let me move back because I switched something right here. Okay. So normally when you cross multiply, you get BDE. So when you cross multiply, you get BD multiplied by E, so you get B, D, E. 
B D E. That's what you get. And so now you group like terms by bringing that one to the left side. So you have A D minus B D E equals to minus B C. And now you can group like terms, which is D, and have A minus B E equals to minus B C. Divide both sides by A minus B D, A minus B. So D is equal to minus B C over A minus B E. But note that this one, if you multiply through by negative one, Okay, on the right hand side. This is the same as capital BC over plus BE minus A. That's another word, right? When you apply negative to both of them. So either way, that is your answer. Okay. All right. So that should give you this answer, which is BC over B E minus A. That is your answer. Now, can you find the, can you make Y2 the subject of this equation? Uh -oh. <laughs> I just hope that you couldn't actually see it. Make Y2 the subject. What's the first thing to do here? If you want to make Y2 the subject, first thing, use the right word. What's the first thing to do? Someone. Yeah, you multiply two by x, x two minus x one. You cross multiply. You That's what you're saying. Yes, yes. The yeah, word is cross multiply. Cross multiply. Cross multiply. So you cross multiply. So you have m outside, x two minus x one. Okay, and then on the right hand side you have y two minus y one. So it's fairly simple. How do you get y2? You move the minus y1 to the right hand side. So you move this one to the side here. And now your answer becomes m bracket x2 minus x1. This is supposed to be x1, right? Okay. Then plus y1 equals to y2. Therefore, you've been able to make the y2 the subject. Again, this is fairly simple. So that's the answer that we just had. You got to learn change of subjects. You got to learn it quite well. The most important terms is group like terms, cross multiply, you know, simplify. Group like terms, cross multiply, simplify. Group like terms, cross multiply, simplify. Simplify by cancellation. Sometimes you have to factorize. Sometimes you have to expand. It's all part of it. Learn it. You will get questions there. Now let's go to simultaneous equation, unless there's any question. So far. Simultaneous equation. If you have a question, quickly let me know so that I can address it. Okay. So this is a simultaneous equation. Basically, there are two ways of solving simultaneous equation. And I know some of you know about it. What are the two ways of solving simultaneous equation? Who can remind us? What are the two ways of solving simultaneous equation? What are the two ways? Portia. Doug, please. Elimination method and substitution method. Very good. What's the difference? Elimination and substitution. Which one do you think is easier? Which is easier? Uh, Doug, for me, substitution. <laughs> Substitution. Yes, please. I like the way you said for me. Actually, you're right. Substitution is really, really cool. So, generally speaking. So let's use a substitution method to solve this. Okay, how do you solve this? Well, one way you can do is to make two out. That's one way. Okay, so take the first equation. Let us stand on this one. So you move the 3x to the right-hand side. So you have 2y equals to 36 minus 3x. Then you now have y 
should be 36 minus 3x divided by 2. So you now have equation 3. You can now drop equation 3 into your equation 2. So that means you have 5x plus 4y. But instead of the y, you put what you have, which is 36 minus 3x okay, divided all divided by 2. Then you add your equal to 64. At this stage, you can cancel these two. Okay, you can cancel these two and the four, leaving here two. And now you have your 5x plus, you can expand two times 36 is what? 72 minus two by six. <laughs> That's interesting. Two times three, that is six. So you have minus six x equals to 64. You group like terms, okay? Five x minus x, sorry. Five x minus six x, that gives you minus six. So you go to this side, you have minus x equals to 64 minus 72. What is 64 minus 72? x is equal to 8. So that gives you x. Now drop this x back into equation 3. Okay. Equation 3 is y equals to 36 minus 3x. So instead of the x, you write 8. All divided by 2. 3 times 8 is 24. So you have 36 minus 24. Divide that by 2. 36 minus 24. Thirty-six minus twenty-four. Who is bold? Who is listening to me? You don't want me to fly because if you are not responding, it means that you want me to fly. So, so you have twelve divided by two. Twelve divided by two. It has six. So your y is six, your x is eight. This is substitution, easy. Learn it, learn it. Let's go to another one. By the way, everything that I worked is here, so you can check a step-by-step. Step. Say, say one. Everything. If you are talking, please talk very loud. I raise your hand as well, okay? Sorry, That's I was a... trying to get you. You were moving to the next slide, so that is why I interrupted. My apologies, sorry. Okay, so this Please. is, yes. Please, can you go to the previous calculation that you did? It was 64 minus 72. I thought we would get a negative number, but. Yeah, you got a negative number. No, you got a negative number, but the X was also negative X. So the negative cancel. And that's okay. what give you the eight. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. All right, so the solution again is on your screen. The same approach in a different way. You can find y first, you can find x first. You can make y a subject, you can make x a subject, get the same answer. Good. Try another one. So go get a Kiola. He has about 100 of simultaneous equations. He had about 100 of equations, and he has about 50 change of subject questions. Solve it. This is a time you gotta beg your children, whom you were insulting at some point, or beg your little young ones to teach you, because now you need them. Okay. Next one. Solve this simultaneously. When you're done, raise your hand. Solve this simultaneously. Raise your hand when you're done. Who is done? By the way, you will notice that in the exam, speed is of the essence. Speed, at the same time, accurate speed. Speed is of the essence.
Yeah, somewhat. Um, Doc, uh, S is E and Y is E. Good, excellent, that's true. Uh, in this case, you can easily use elimination method, okay? Because in the elimination method, if this is your equation one, and this is your two, it's easy to use elimination method to get answers correct by adding. So you add equation one to two, that will cancel this and that. And you add the four X to the two X, that gives you six X. You add a 14 to the four, that will give you 18. So elimination becomes easier. And divide both sides by six, you divide both sides by six, S is equal to three, which is what he said. You take that fray, drop it into any one of them, move it to equation one, okay? And find the value of Y, now that you know X. Question one is two X, that means it's two, three, because X is three, plus the four Y equals to 14. Two X is six. Six plus four Y equals to 14. To get Y, you move the six to the right-hand side. That becomes 14 minus six, which is eight. So you get four Y equals to eight. That means Y is equal to two. That is how you find this elimination. Easy. Learn it. Learn it. Everything is well executed here. It's not clear. Next one. Vectors. So done change of subject. You've done simultaneous equation. That means our equation is easy. A simultaneous equation is difficult than equation. So you should know equation of simultaneous equation. Now we're going to look at vectors and matrices. Why? Because the Python, the app, and most of the Excel that you will use behind the scenes are vectors and matrices. So you got to learn the properties and the rules of vectors and matrices. Please pay attention. Stop whatever you are doing now and pay attention. What is a vector? A vector is telling you the direction and the magnitude of something. It's a very practical thing. In our analysis, the only way to represent a vector is column. So you represent a vector in this format. Now, sometimes if you remember the right angle triangle, you can be told to move from a point A to a point B to a point C. And then you are told that the distance from A to B is say four. And B to C is say two or three. How do you get A to C? Now that distance AC is a vector with an arrow telling you the direction and the magnitude. Anyway, in this example, what do you use to find AC? What theorem? Pythagoras theory. Pythagoras theory. So what does that say? Three squared plus four squared. Three squared is nine, four squared is 16. 16 plus nine. That's how you do it. That gives you the hypotenuse. That's a vector. And there are several ways. Of course, the vector can be in, you know, in this case, I'm using four and three. Three is on the x-axis, four is on the y-axis. So if I were to be writing, I'll be writing them like this. What is the thing in the element? Okay. The first one is the x. That is a row. The second one is the column. In this very example, or the vertical section. Now, how you write vectors, it can be written using brackets and square brackets. This is a bracket, that is a square bracket. If it is a vertical one, like the one we have here, that is a column vector. If it is a horizontal one, that is a row vector. 
the entries, the components, the coefficients, they tell you the direction. Now, you can have an n vector, which means it has a size of n. And like I said before, column vectors are different from row vectors. Remember, a vector is just one straight element. That is whether it is one straight column or one straight row. You know, the problem is that sometimes you have to write things. And as you write in it, you are getting it done to say that I watch the recording. So when you write the same vectors horizontally, it is a row vector. But when you write it vertically, it is a column vector. There's more to vectors than meets the eye. Let's get deeper. Why do we need vectors? Well, I decided to look at a position of the University of Ghana. You can get a position of a building, position of anything. You can have the longitude and the latitude. The capability of the using longitudes and latitudes are usually written in vector form. It's very practical. So you can find a point on the globe, you know, describing by just two numbers, the latitude and longitude. And once you combine this, you can create a vector with it. That tells you vectors are practical. Also, in simultaneous equation systems, you can use vectors. You can represent a simultaneous equation in a vector form. If we go back here, the simultaneous equation that you are seeing on your screen right now, I can write it in a vector. You take the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, the numbers, and one number following the other, and the other number following the other. So you can take two, four in that order, four, four in that order, and then put a bracket into it. The unknowns are the X and the Y. They appear in both. You can have your X and the Y attached to it and bring your equal to sign. Then those numbers on the right-hand side, you can put them also in a vector form, in a form of four, 14, and four. What have I done? I have created something we call A, X, and then B. Now, in this case, we've gone a little bit beyond a vector, to be honest with you. We've brought matrix into the picture. Very soon, I'll tell you the difference between a vector and a matrix. But just know that a vector is a baby of a matrix. It's one of the matrices. What you see on your screen will be needed very soon. Pay attention to that. Write it down. I just converted a simultaneous equation into a vector form, uh, into a matrix, sorry. So what is the difference between a vector and a matrix? Well, a one column matrix is a vector. A one column row is a vector. Sorry, a one row matrix, <laughs> a one row matrix is a row vector. In other words, a vector has only one column or one row. Now, when I say one column, I mean one column of numbers where the focus is on the column. So there will be many rows, but one column. Or there will be many columns, but one row. That is a vector. You'll understand better as you go. At this stage, let me just go back and tell you a bit about vectors. I've told you that you can use it for latitude and longitude positions. You can use it for linear systems. Note that anything you want to produce, like, like you know, systems of equations, whether you are using linear programming, okay, these are all can be written in linear equations. And so that is where vector becomes practical. If a computer is using vectors, the R is using vectors, the Python is using vectors, the tablet is using vectors, the Excel is using vectors. Okay. There are three special kinds of vectors. Zero vectors, ones vectors, unit vectors. What is the difference? 
A zero vector is where everything is zero. A one vector is where everything in it is one. A unit vector has one entry of one and every other thing is zero. So when you look at the things I have here, E1, is it a zero vector, a ones vector, or a unit vector? You can tell me. E1 here. Which of them is that? E1. Is it a zero vector, a ones vector, a unit vector? You can tell us. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. Please, uh, the explanation, it's it's a unit vector. It is Instead a unit vector. One entry and all others are zero. What about the second one? Zero. What about the second one? The second, the second one. one is also a unit vector. The third one is also a unit vector. Okay. Now, what about this one I've written? What vector is that? It's a zero vector. And what vector is this? It's a, a unit vector. And what vector is that? Mm. It's a ones vector. Just move on. Some of you know the answers. I know you are silently sitting. Let's go to vector addition. Now we're going to add vectors together. Okay. So if you have n vectors, let's say a and b, and you want to add them, you want to add a to b. Okay. You want to add a to b. And this is a, this is b. This is A, this is B. If you want to add them, just add them row by row, row by row, row by row. So you can see that you have one, six, two, one, two, four, one, six, two, one, two, four. Just add the ones together, you get two. Put it in a vector. Just add the next six plus two, you get eight. Put it in a vector. Two plus four, you get six. Put it in a vector. Job done. Now, why is this a vector? Who can tell me? It is a vector. Why is each one of them a vector? You've said it multiple times. It's okay. Why is each one a vector? It is a vector. Because it has a one column. That's it. Either it has a one column or one row. That's a vector. So each one of them has one column. For example, the first one column is one, six, two. That's one column. Another one column is one, two, four. That's another column. Another one column is two, eight, six. That's another column. And therefore, that is what makes, either it has one column or one row, either of them. Let's look at the properties of vectors. Properties. Commutative. Commutative property and associative property are very common. Associative property looks more about three or more. Okay, where you looking at A plus B plus C, A plus B bracketed is the same as A, B plus C, with a B plus C bracket. That's associative. Commutative is simple because you're swapping their position. So A plus B equals this, B plus A. An identity is when you take a, a vector and add zeros to it. An inverse is when you take a vector from itself. That's it. These are the properties of vector additions. Some of them you are going to use them right now. It's fairly simple if you know it. Let's take an example. So this on your screen is what we call a vector. So you have a vector called u, which is two and six. 
you have a vector called V, which is five and one. Can you find U minus V? Raise your hand and tell it. What is U minus V? U minus V. The answer you had. Salasi. It's a negative three and five. Negative three and five is the right answer. This is it. And it is in a column way. So maybe next time you say negative three up, five down. You get it. Let's take another one. So you have a vector of two, five, and then we have a vector of three, okay, times the two. Now that three is called a scalar. We'll come back to it. Maybe I should have told you that before, but the three is multiplying the vector u. In that case, the three has to multiply the top value, then the same three multiplies the down value. So what would be the solution to this vector? This vector multiplication. What will be the solution, Sophia? Yes, yeah, Sophia. Guys, don't just watch. Talk, Vedrika. Six five. Oh, six up. Six up. Sophia, please keep quiet a bit for me. Okay, I called you three times. Now. You have six and then 15. And that is how you do. The three is the scalar. Let's talk a bit about scalar. So you have a scalar beta, an n vector, let's say a cap, and you are multiplying the beta by the a cap. Remember the a cap is a vector. What is in the brackets is a vector. Then you multiply the beta, which is outside. So now everything now becomes a vector with the beta multiplying the A. Again, it won't make sense until you get an example. This is an example. <laughs> I was going to say that what is five multiplying the things on the left, but I've given you the answers already. So you can see that five here is a scalar. Everything in the column here is a vector. And you have a scalar five multiplying the vector one, two, four from top to down. So you take the five times a one, five times a two, five times a four. And that gives you this answer. A scalar vector multiplication, scalar vector addition, scalar vector subtraction is very important. We are going to combine the addition and the multiplication together. Look at what you have on the screen. Find the answer to this scalar vector addition and multiplication. Find that and let me know. Have your pen with you. Have your pen and paper. If you are watching this whilst driving, you're not helping yourself. If you are watching this whilst lying down on your bed, you are, you are, you are, you are a disgrace to humanity because you can't do this whilst lying down on your bed. You got to be writing, sitting down on a chair and table. Please do yourself, participate in your own rescue. Have a pen and a book with you. Sit upright. Do this for you. It's a compulsory question we are looking at here. So take note. Yes, who has gotten something? Yes, Jenny. Negative 18, 3 and 2. Thank you on the track. So first you take the three times negative four, three times one, three times zero, then two times negative three, two times zero, two times one, then you sum it. Okay. If you do that correctly, you will land correctly, just as you said, negative 18, three, and two. Let's go to another one. On the right here, we have two vectors. A, A is one and four from top to down. B is two and seven, top to down. Find A plus B. Quick, 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 okay? I'm trying to mix all of them for you. 
What is A plus B? Three eleven. Okay, three eleven. That's all you have here. Next, let's go to a matrix. A matrix is simply a vector of rows and columns. So it's an array of columns and rows. A matrix has multiple vectors. Write it down. A matrix has multiple vectors. Write it down. A matrix has multiple vectors. Write it down, okay? So we have an array, a rectangular array of numbers in rows and columns. Whereas a vector is just one column or one row, a matrix is many columns, many rows, simple. Put it down, you forget, put it down, put it down. You see, you're not right, that's a problem. And the elements in a matrix are defined by an order. So if A is a matrix and the order is M by N, then the ith row and the jth column are the position of A. So if you take A11, the first one is where it is located in the form of row. The second one is where it is located or his position in the form of a column. So the first one here means it's on the first row. The second one here is on the first column. Now, if you have something like one, two, one, two means that it is on the first row by the second column. So the one and two will tell you the ith row and the jth column of that particular matrix. And this is denoted as AIJ, AIJ, AIJ. Keep that in mind. The size of a matrix is shown as the number of the rows followed by the columns. I've said that already. Now you can have a matrix that has that is said to be a two by three matrix. That means that it has two rows and three columns. That's what it means. A two by two, two by three matrix has two rows and three columns. What does a matrix A, which has seven, eight mean? What does this mean? Or even if you don't do that, you just rather do seven, eight. Like, what does this seven, eight mean? So that's it. So it means uh, seven rows and then eight columns. Yeah. That's seven, seven rows and eight columns. When you're writing it, that's a lot of numbers you're writing, all put together. Remember, this is the matrix, not a position of the matrix. So let's look at some matrices. So now the matrix you see on your screen here is a column matrix. The other one you see, the matrix F, sorry, the column, the vector that you see, the vector V here is a column vector. The vector F is also a column vector, but there are also matrices. There are also matrices. Who can tell me why this is a vector, but also a matrix? Why is this a vector, but also a matrix? Do you remember the difference between a vector and a matrix I gave you? A one column matrix is a vector. Write it down. A one column matrix is a vector. A one row matrix is a vector. A one column matrix is a column vector. A one row matrix is a row matrix, is a row vector. Keep that in mind, it will help you. So all the time, the matrices are plenty, then the vectors are just one. So if the, the 10 is a vector, then it's automatically a matrix as well. Because there can be multiple of that making it matrices. Matrices. Okay, let's look at some special types of matrices. They're very, very special. There are five of them. The first one is a square matrix. A square matrix, and I'll ask you some of this, so it's very important to distinguish. Because I'm, I'm going to tell you to tell me the linkages. A square matrix is the one where 
the number of rows are the same as the number of columns. The number of rows are the same as the number of columns. So if you look at the first one, A, who can tell me why A is a square matrix? Why is A a square matrix? Jenny. Because it has two rows and two columns. Perfect. Why is B a square matrix? Philip. It has three rows and three columns. Very good. Now let me ask you something. What I've written here. Let me call it C. Is it a square matrix or is it not a square matrix? What I've written. Is it a square matrix or is it not a square matrix? So that's it. So it's not a square matrix. Why? Because it has two columns and then three rows. Uh -huh. And a square matrix is supposed to have uh, equal number of rows and then columns. Perfect. You got it. Let's go to the next one. Diagonal matrix. A diagonal matrix, so far, always remember to lower your hands like others do. Before you always say that you forget. Always remember that. Please don't repeat it. Like that. A diagonal matrix is a square matrix, but then the diagonal elements are zero. So for you to be a diagonal matrix, it got to be a square matrix itself. Okay. But then the off-diagonal entries are zero. The diagonal numbers are the only numbers that are non-zeros. Every other thing that is not on the diagonal is zero. That is a diagonal matrix. So what you see, see here is a two by two diagonal matrix. D is a three by three diagonal matrix. It's as simple as that. Which one is a subset of the other? Square matrix, diagonal matrix. Which one is a subset of the other? Square matrix, diagonal matrix. You can tell. You're honest. So uh, I think the square matrix is a subset of diagonal matrix. No. It's the opposite. For you to be diagonal, you got to be a square matrix in the first place. So a diagonal matrix is part of a square matrix. You got to be square before you start thinking about being the diagonal. Okay, let's go to zero matrix. Zero matrix is a matrix where everything is zero. Everything in there is zero. All the entries are zero. There's a typical example here. The next one is an identity matrix. I told you there are five. There's a fourth one. Identity matrix. It's, it's one of the powerful matrices, so you should take note of it. We'll come back to it towards the end. An identity matrix is a matrix where all the diagonal elements are equal to one. All the diagonal elements are equal to one. For you to be an identity matrix, you gotta be a square matrix. For you to be an identity matrix, you gotta be a diagonal matrix. What then do you think is the difference between the diagonal matrix and an identity matrix? Identity matrix is what you saw. This is the diagonal matrix, the C and D. Identity matrix is G and H. What do you see here as the main difference between identity matrix and the diagonal? Well, the thing is that 
Diagonal matrix require that the, the off diagonal elements are zero. The same thing identity matrix require. But then the diagonal matrix says that the diagonal numbers, the numbers on the diagonal, they can be different numbers. But identity matrix says that no, they cannot be different numbers. They've got to all be one. Each one of them must be one. Not each one of them must be three. Each one of them must be one. So you, you got to go a step further beyond diagonal metrics to get an identity matrix. Identity matrix is a special kind of diagonal matrix. Diagonal matrix is a special kind of square matrix. Guys, are you following? If you are following, type yes. Type Y if you are following. If you are not following, type N. You are following type Y. It's your response that will tell me. Okay, good. All of you are following. The upper triangular matrix and the lower triangular matrix are kind of, we hardly use them though. But then the upper triangular matrix says that all the numbers, everything below the diagonal is zero. That is upper triangular. Upper triangular means that everything about the diagonal, not all of them are zeros. Some of them can be zero, some of them can be non-zeros. But all the numbers below the diagonal are zeros. All the numbers below the diagonal are zeros. That is upper triangular. Lower triangular means all the numbers above the diagonal are zero. It's simple. You either know it or you don't. We'll go to the real deal for today. Let's look at a matrix algebra. We are going to add some of them. Remember this. You have a matrix which is A, 2, I'll be mentioning them in the form of row, 2, 4, 7, 5. This is a matrix. What kind of matrix is this? You can tell us. What kind of matrix is that? Yeah, it's Dovi. A square matrix. It's a square matrix. B is also a square matrix. You are learning. Now, here's what you should do. <laughs> I've added them. Oh, come on. I was going to tell you to add them, actually. If you were to add these matrices, what will it be? If you were to add them, what will it be? Yeah, actually, I was going to do it and I did it for you. And now that I've done it for you, your brain will look like you know it. But that's partly because I've done it for you. If I haven't done it for you, you should be able to calculate. How do you how do you add them? Yes, so that's it. So, so you add the first row. Uh, first row to the first rows and then the second uh, the columns to the columns so this is going to be two plus five four plus three so it is going to be seven seven nine six now the one easy way of saying what you said is that take the first one and let it sit beautifully perfectly on the second one take the elements of a and dump it perfectly on b Whichever number falls or sits on the other number, you add them, isn't it? That's vector addition. So if you move the element inside A, okay, and then sit them nicely here, you will see that the two will be seated on the five. Okay? The four will be seated on the three. Then the seven will sit on the two. Then the five will sit on the one. Well, in that case, you add them. So 2 plus 5, 4 plus 3, 7 plus 2, 5 plus 1. Ladies and gentlemen, are you following me, please? Are you following me? OK. So that's how you get your answer. This is addition of matrices. That is only the same as multiplication. Okay. Now, if you want to subtract, okay, you got to do that subtraction in a unique way. I'm doing that easily here. 
So if you want to do the subtraction, that's how you do it. Now, you, take, you can take A here, and you are subtracting 5. So it's 2 minus 5, 4 minus 3, like that. And you can get the answers here. The addition and subtraction are OK. Yeah, OK. But when you are multiplying, it's not that simple. When you are multiplying, the way you multiply is not that simple. We'll come back to that. OK. Let's go to a scalar multiplication. In the matrix, do you remember what a scalar is? It's like a constant number. That's a scalar, single number, constant number, single number, constant number. So when you look on your screen here, you have A, but A is now being multiplied by seven. Seven is a scalar. Seven is a scalar. Do your multiplication and let me see. It's very simple, by the way. Your multiplication, what do you get? Anybody? You take the seven, each one must get it. So that's. Say 14, 28, 49, 35. Good. There you go. 14, 28, 49, 35. That is how you use scalar multiplication. Know what the difference between a scalar and a vector and the matrix. There are properties of matrices. They are cool. The associative, the distributive, you know, and some of the other. You can see all of them here. They are not difficult if you sit down and you look at a property. It is these properties that you got to hold when you're adding, subtracting, multiplying, and all of that. Now let's look at the transpose of the matrix. Please remember, the transpose of a matrix is not the same as the inverse of a matrix. The transpose of a matrix is where you rotate the rows and make them columns, and then rotate the columns and make them rows. So the first column becomes the first row. The second column becomes the second row. The third column becomes the third row. It's as simple as that. Is as simple as that. Let's take an example. If you look at this very one on your screen, you can see that you have two, four, nine. That's the first column. Now this two, four, nine becomes a two, four, nine in the first row. In the first row. Very simple. Okay, let's go to the next one. So that's what we mean by transpose of a matrix. Well, let's try and understand some few things. We use T for transpose. Sometimes we use prime. Doesn't matter. Matrix transpose, they also have their properties. So like A plus B transpose is the same as A transpose plus B transpose, you see? Like A prime prime is the same as A. It's like you take A and then you take the transpose of A, then you take the transpose of the transpose of A, you still get back A. You should prove that. You should give your own one and prove that. It's like rotating the rows to the columns, then the columns back to the rows. So, And we can verify the transpose of each of these numbers by rotating the rows to the columns. Sample again. Now let's go to the most important one for today. This is important to me. Pay attention. The index of a matrix. Now normally, when you have real numbers, a real number is a simple, you know, positive, non-decimal number. In, in such a case, for real numbers, the inverse of a matrix is said to be the reciprocal of, 
the inverse of a number is a reciprocal of the number. So if I write a number, say five, and I tell you, tell me the, the inverse okay, of this number, okay, that's what I mean by the inverse of the number. That is going to be the reciprocal of the number. That's it. That's it. But the inverse of a square matrix A, so this is a square matrix A. Its inverse is going to be A to the power negative one. A is a matrix. A to the power negative one is a matrix. So the product, if you multiply A by A to the power negative one, that according to the law, of inverse of matrices. That is an identity matrix. Take note, write it down. So in the world of the inverse of a matrix, you should know that if you, if, or if you, the, you multiply a, a matrix by its inverse, that is an identity matrix. But how do you even calculate the inverse of a matrix in the first place? Well, to calculate the inverse of a matrix, ladies and gentlemen, you need two things. Write it down. The first one you need is known as a determinant. The second you need is known as the adjunct. To calculate this, which is a to the power negative one, you need two things. You need a determinant. You need the adjunct. Let's try and get it right. I know I'm talking in Hebrew. So here is what you have here. How do you write a determinant? We are going to see how to write a determinant very soon. A determinant of an, a matrix A is given by... So when I say a determinant of A, a determinant of A is written as a with a left vertical bar and a right vertical bar. That is a determinant of A. This is how you write it. That's all. But you, this is not the only thing that will help you to find the inverse of a matrix. No. Another thing will help you to find the inverse of a matrix. What is that? Apart from the determinant, is the adjoint of the matrix. These two are needed to compute the A to the power negative one. That is the inverse of a matrix. Now, this is how you find the inverse of a matrix. Write it down. Write it down. Write it down. A to the power negative one. That is equal to one over the determinant of A multiplied by the adjoint of A. Ladies and gentlemen, this is important. If you can crack this, you can solve many of the questions. Let's take an example. How do you find, I want to show you how you find each one of them, don't worry. How do you find the determinant, which is the A bar left bar right? How do you find a determinant of a matrix? Well, first we need to know the matrix, isn't it? So let's take a matrix A. These are the elements of A. A is, capital A is equal to the matrix of A, B, C, D. From left to right and left to right. Then in that case, if you want to find the determinant of A, which is one over that, this Sorry, the determinant is not the one over that. The determinant is just the denominator. The determinant is just take the A and the D and then multiply it together and subtract the B and the C multiply together. That gives you the determinant of A. The adjoint of A and when you do one divided by that answer, okay, that is needed 
towards the calculation of your index of A. Now, the adjoint is the tricky part. The adjoint, what you do is that you switch the D and the A. Okay. So where the A is, you move the A to where the D dog is. And then move where the D is to where the A apple is. You switch them. But then the numbers on the right diagonals, you don't switch them. The C and B, or the B and C, you don't switch them. You maintain them, but you give each one of them a negative. That is the adjoint of A. So the adjoint of A has two things to do. The determinant of A is very simple. You multiply A and D, subtract B and C. But the adjoint, you switch the A and D, and then don't switch the B and C, but then give them negative. When you now multiply these two together, one over the determinant, multiply by the adjoint, everything now gives you the index of A. Ladies and gentlemen, if I give you a number, can you find the determinant? Let's go up here. And let's take a number. So here you have on your screen a matrix called A. And with A, you have negative three and then four. That is left to right. Then you also have two and then five, left to right. Your question is to find the index of A. First of all, who can tell me the determinant of A? Let's just deal with the determinant of A first. Because you need the determinant of A towards your calculation of the index of A. Steven. Salasi. Say uh, negative one over twenty three. Negative one over 23. No, no, I'm talking about just the determinant. You have brought the numerator one, isn't it? Yes. So it is negative three times five minus four times two. I just need the answer of the determinant. What is it? So that's negative 23. Yeah, that's what you had. Yes, please. That's what he had, ladies and gentlemen. So now, what is going to be the adjoint of A? Who has got that? What is going to be the adjoint of A? Stephen. The numbers were three, four, from left to right. Always do left to right, then come down and do left to right again. Yes, Steven. Selassie. So, five, negative four, negative two, negative three. Excellent. That's it. Now let's put it together now. Okay. Since all of you have cracked, let's put it all together. So this is what you had. Okay. Now you created this determinant for that. Let's get the specifics. 23. So when you bring the negative together, and then you have the five, negative four, negative two, negative three. 
Therefore, the inverse of A is what you see on your screen. It's better to multiply through. So when you multiply through, what will be the final answer? You are going to get fractions anyway. Who can tell me the final answer when you multiply through? Remember that the negative one over three is now what kind of matrix? Or what, hey, what is that? What is a negative one over three? What's the name for that thing? So that's it. Joseph. The scalar. The scalar. And so when you multiply it by the matrix itself, the matrix on the right-hand side, which is the adjoint at this stage, what do you get? What do you get as an element? You can tell me the first one. The first one of the odd. That would be negative 5 over 23. Then the one on the right will be negative 4 over 23, positive 4 over 23. Then the one below left is positive 2 over 23. Then the last one on the right will be positive 3 over 23. I hope you guys follow. I want you to do this. And this time, I want you to do it to the end. Try this. Find the index of this matrix called A. When you are done, raise your hand. Who is that? Right. All right, so dog, so it will be six over ten, negative seven over ten. That's the rule. Then then, then the second rule will be negative two over ten and four over ten. Excellent. Super. In terms of decimals, it will be point what point what point what? So it will be um zero point six, negative zero point seven. That's the first rule. Then negative. 0 0.2 and 0, and 0 0.4 on the second row. Guys, it's correct. That's what you have here. You know when the person is right and then you put it there, it becomes sweet. Now, with that knowledge, we are going to find the simultaneous equation. You can see, you can find a simultaneous equation systems, you can use matrix to solve that. Sir. Yes, go ahead. So does that mean that when uh, you get maybe the six over 10, negative seven over 10, you're supposed to change it to like a decimal? Yes. You, no, you don't have to necessarily change it to decimal. You keep it in fraction. I wanted this one to be decimal. Okay. Yeah. If they can cancel, as for that, you have to, because you don't need to go and have six over two, then you go and write six over two. The answer is three, so you have to write. Okay. Let's take this simultaneous equation. This is a simultaneous equation, ideally, Forget about this one Y. I deliberately wrote it for a reason, for people to know, beginners to know that the Y is standing alone that has one in front of it. The first thing you would have done is use, but it, you would have used a substitution or the elimination method. That's what you would have used to calculate it. But the question restricts you to use matrices for it. How do you solve it? It's easy. Anytime you're solving a matrix, you got to understand two things, that the whole matrix can be written as A, X, B. A, 
x d. The a are the numbers on the left-hand side. The b are the numbers on the right-hand side of the equation. The x are the coordinates. When I say the coordinates, I'm talking about the unknown variables. So who can tell me the numbers on the left-hand side of the equation? If we are to write it in a matrix form, the first one is this three. So you write three. The second one on the right is negative one. So you write negative one. Then the one below is two. Then the one next is one. This is how you convert the whole thing to a matrix. Then the next thing is the X. The X are the unknowns. There are two unknowns in that right order. The first is X. The second is Y. It has to be multiplying the first numbers because you can see it even in the equation that they are multiplied. Actually, what has happened in the first part here is that you multiply this three by the X and then you, then you added the negative one by the X. So anytime you are multiplying, okay, this is a multiplication. You will notice that this is a, a, a vector and this on the left here is a matrix. You got to take the vector to multiply the first one, take the vector to multiply the second one. Okay, you add them. Then you take the y to multiply the first one, which is one y or y. Take the y to multiply the second one, which is two y. Remember, you're adding them as well. You're not only multiplying them, but you're adding them. Then you write your equal to, and then you can put the numbers on the right-hand side together in the form of a vector or a matrix. Can you all do this? Yes, I'm sure you can learn how to, you know, write every simultaneous equation in a form of a matrix. The next thing to do is to use the formula that I, um, the, the one that, what do you call it? You gotta use a particular formula actually to be able to, to detect how to find the matrix. And it's a beautiful formula. And this is how the formula is. And this is the macho formula. It's given by, let me write it here. It's given by A inverse, or the inverse of A multiplied by A, then the X, which is unknown variables, okay, equal to the inverse of A multiplied by B. That's it. If you can even substitute this, you can find the answer straight away. This is the formula that you use to find the value of X and Y. This is it. So you're gonna substitute all of them into that. Now, first of all, yes, Rosemary. Yes, please. I wanted to find out. Um, you know the the um the two x plus one y it has one y, but the top one we use a negative one at the top. So I was wondering um if the single y also means um a one. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, the single y would add anything in front of it as well, and you can see that that is why here. Okay, it's one. And here it's also one, but I wrote just negative. But it's one in there. In fact, ideally, we don't normally write one y or one x. But I decided to write this one just so that you know that the value there is. Any number standing alone is multiplied by one. Any letter standing alone is multiplied by one. Now, what can you say about this first part on the left hand side here? I know one of you will remember. We said something about an index multiplying itself. Do you remember? The index of a matrix multiplying the matrix. You gave it a name. Called it a name. What kind of matrix is that? For sure. Doug, please, identity matrix. It is an identity matrix. So A minus one and A is an identity matrix. 
So we don't need to even calculate it because we know that is an identity matrix. So we can now change this and call the whole thing as I for identity matrix. So an identity matrix multiplied by X equal to the A negative one B. This part, you can't change it. So we're going to now take each of these work and then work them all out together. That's what you got to do. It's precise. So the, the one is on the left-hand side. By the way, if it is an identity matrix, it means that's one, 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 one. So we don't need to bother ourselves. Okay. It means that all we need is an X. So this identity matrix is basically like we are now have X. And this X stands for this small X and small Y. And this X now is the A minus one B. So what we need to now do is to find the index of A from what you see here. And what is the A here? The A is the first part. And then once we have found the inverse of A, we multiply that by B. And what is B? B is five and five. And that's it. Once you've done that, you're done. So let's go and find it. But to get the A, you and I both know that we need to go and find the determinant. So what is the determinant of A? You can just quickly look at it. You multiply this by that minus this by that. What is the answer? Selassie. The five. Good. So, guys, do you all understand? If you don't understand, let's know. Three times one, three. Minus two times one, minus two. So you get three minus minus two, which is five. Therefore, a determinant is going to be one over the five. Sorry, A index. Inverse of A is one over the five. Where the five is it? Is a determinant multiplied by the adjunct of A. So now let's look at the adjunct of A. So what would be the adjunct of A from left to right, left to right? The first number would be what? Agent of A. One. One, good. The first number will be one. Then the one on the right. One. One, very good. Then you come to the bottom, the left one. Minus two. Minus two. Very good. Who is this mass guy? And then the last one on the bottom right. Three. Three, excellent. So guys, this is how you do it. This is exactly how you do it. So you're going to take the multiplication. So you take this one over five is a scalar. So that will multiply the top part, okay, which will also be one over five. Then the right part, that will also be one over five. Then the down left, that will be negative two over five. Then the down right, that will be three over five. This is a new matrix. This that you see here is what is known as the index of A. But that doesn't solve your value because your X value is going to be this index of A you just found multiplying. So you're going to have one over five then another one over five, then negative two over five, then three over five. Okay. This whole thing should be multiplying B and B is five and then five. So how do you do the multiplication? We did that before here, if you can remember the previous one. Okay, so you take the five, so you take one, the five to multiply this one over five plus this five, multiplying the one over five again. So what do you get in the first one? This will be equal to what? The first one. 
Yeah, Johannes. So two. Two, exactly. So that is two. That is two. So you write two here. And then what about the next one? You get five, multiplying negative two over five. Then you have five, multiplying three over five. Of course, you're adding them. Root. Dog one. One, exactly. Therefore, what is the value for X? And what is the value for Y? Root. And so the value for X is two and Y is one. That's it. This is how you come, but if you are not so sure of yourself, okay, you gotta go and then solve this using the substitution approach. And you see that you get the same thing. But if you are being restricted to use matrix, this is how it is. And you will be restricted at some point to use matrix. So ladies and gentlemen, if you watch this very carefully, this is how your answer is gonna be. Everything that you see here, it's as a result of thought, careful thought. You are done. Now I'm ready to give you your areas. Give it an answer. What you see here is a two by two matrix. Do you realize that? And this one on the right is a two by one matrix. You see that? Yes, sir. So you normally, when you cancel the inside numbers, cancel this one, you normally cancel the inside numbers then you are now expecting to get what? A two by one matrix. And a two by one matrix means there are two rows, which is what you see here. And then there's one column. Yeah. That's why you have two rows, one column. So for this addition, but you see, if they were two, two, suppose it was two by two and another two by two. Then in that case, your result you are going to have is going to be two by two. Because when you kill the inside guys, you are only left with two by two. So you're expecting to get a number like two, one, four, eight. Something. Other than that, that is how you have it. Right. You have a question? Hello, Doc. Yeah. yeah please, um, I want to know if... If can use um and if can find the inverse of a matrix which has two columns and then three rows. No. Is that because there are products in there? They must match. Oh, okay. Yeah. They must match. <laughs> 